Hey guys, I would say how are you today because I normally do, but I think the answer is going to be the same no matter who you are, where you are, we're all stressed out, right? Kids are home from school for a good bit and in between e-learning and not being able to hang out with their friends are probably driving you crazy. This video is made for kids, it's attended for kids, uh, it's safe for kids. I will let you know that um, you kids out there that are watching, um, before you do this, that you're doing it with your parents' permission, um, that you're not using any tools or supplies or materials you're not supposed to without their permission. Um, that includes uh, markers, crayons, scissors, whatever it is, make sure you have mom and dad's permission, okay? So for those that don't know, I, um, uh, for the parents out there that are watching with their kids, I was a daycare provider, uh, in-home daycare provider for a long time, uh, from about 1995 to about 2003 or so. I actually tried to figure out the exact dates for you all, but yeah, it was so long ago, I have no idea. Um, so in the description below, I've pulled from my old backup files of my daycare website. Yes, I did have a website even back in the day. Um, <laughs> I pulled some um, craft ideas and homemade um, supplies, if you will, um, recipes, and I put them into a PDF document. I, I will link the document in the description below should YouTube allow me to um, with these made for kids videos. I have no idea, but I will link the um, document in the description below if I can. Uh, if I can't, you can go to my Facebook group, uh, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, and the link to the document will be over there for all to use and share and print and reprint and do whatever you want with. Um, in the meantime, we're going to work on some quick little ideas of some things that you all can make at home. And you're going to need, this is with simple tools. I tried to pull out simple things, kid-friendly things, things that you're probably not going to um, not have at your house, I'm trying to like knock, not knock everything off of my table. My table's a disaster. A anyway, as it usually is. Anyway, um, so I've got Crayola markers. I've got some different kind of crayons. These are actually the kind that you get when you go out to a restaurant and, um, your kids, um, get the activity kit. Um, a fun fact, I may be a grown-up, but I like the activity kits. <laughs> so anyway, I have some different kind of crayons. I have these. I have some Crayola Twistables. I've got some Crayola markers. These are the metallic ones. Use what you have. You may have different things than me. I've got a few Crayola... Um, are they Crayola? Yeah. Uh, Crayola mini colored pencils. I've got some regular pencils. This is one from Ikea. You know, the free one. I've got a plain old pen. Now I have a water brush and a paint brush. You all may not have that, so get a Q-tip if you have like a Q-tip maybe. Um, a little bit of water, popsicle stick, maybe a couple of little sponges. Again, ask mom and or dad um, what they have that you can use and do this with their permission and mom and dad Probably some of this, depending on the age of your child, should be done with supervision, all right? Um, I have some masking tape, but any tape. And I've got some newspaper. And I've got some colored paper, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is take these. These are just scraps of white paper. Any paper will do. You could do paper with the lines on it, binder paper. That would work. I'm going to take a pen. You definitely could do this with a pencil. Um, and I'm gonna just draw some shapes. So these are some that I've done already. I did eyeballs, noses, lips, things that could be used for eyebrows, circles, flowers, dots, arrows. You get the idea, right? Okay, so I'll show you. Real easy stuff. And don't say to me or yourself, well, mine doesn't look like that. It doesn't matter. Just draw and it could be um, messy. It could be neater. Maybe you're a better uh, artist than I am and you can do really fabulous stuff. Cool, do that. 
So I just want you to draw simple shapes, you know, maybe circles with your pen or your pencil. You can draw an arrow. You notice none of these are, are hard, right? You can draw an eyeball. You do kind of a shape like that and then do these two sort of half moons in the middle and do a circle and put this like line above for the eyelid. This is the pupil. This is the iris, the colored part of the eyeball. This part is the white part of the eyeball, which is called the sclera, okay? And you have that pink part, right? Which is usually like right here. And if you're gonna do eyeball and you're gonna do, wanna do two of them because you're gonna wanna put a face, then you have to do another one. They don't have to be exact. What is it the beauty gurus say when they're doing like their eyebrows? Sisters, not twins. <laughs> so just kind of close. For you parents out there, this video is not monetized. It's not going to be. This is to help you all out in this stressful time that we're having. Give the kids something safe to watch on TV, something to do. Okay, eyebrows. We'll do a nose. So you do this kind of funny shape like this. And then do this. And then do another one on the other side. And then let's do some lips. And don't draw your shapes too close together. Those lips are probably a little too close to that arrow, but we'll make it work. Yeah, something like that. Once you have your shapes in either, again, pen or pencil, then I want to take you to take your coloring implements and I want you to start coloring things in. So I'm going to grab this light blue colored pencil and I'm, you notice I'm coloring with it on the side so I can get a more even coverage of color. Okay, then I'm gonna take um, one of my crayons and I have this like greenish blue color and I'm going to go around the outer edges of the iris, the colored part of the eye. Now in real humans, the outer edge of your iris is darker than the center part. If you look in the mirror, you'll see that, right? And then I'm gonna take this even darker purpley blue color Put a little bit of that on here. Okay, and then the wax, the crayon's gonna leave, if you feel it, it leaves a little bit of a waxy finish, right? So I wanna really push the crayon into the paper, get rid of some of the excess wax. So I'm gonna rub over it with a popsicle stick. The picture's gonna shake a little bit because this makes the table shake. And then this will allow me to more easily go over the top of that crayon with other things, which I normally would not be able to do because waxy things don't like to be drawn over the top of. I'm gonna take, this is just, this is a mechanical pencil, but you could take any pencil. And I'm gonna just add some shadows to the top of the eyelid where the eyelashes would be to the corners of the eye. And I'm going to take one of my markers and a paintbrush. This is one that has water inside of it, but you could definitely do this with a Q-tip. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of this marker on my eye, and then I'm going to right away go in with my brush. And look what happens to that Crayola marker. It dissolves in the water. It gives you something really interesting, right? And the idea is just to have fun with this and make some shapes. Again, they could be any shape. 
There's no rhyme or reason. There's no rule. Do what you think you feel like doing. I really like playing with these markers with water because they really give an interesting sort of watercolor effect, right? So I am going to color the rest of these. I'm gonna fast forward through that and we'll be right back. Okay, now if you're old enough to use scissors, then this next part's really easy for you. But if you're not old enough for that, I do have an alternative. Um, and I wanna say that if you have access to paints, again, with your parents' permission, um, and uh, making sure that you're not making a mess for mom and dad, you're, again, doing it with their permission, you could color these in with paints, um, watercolor paints or something like that, that would be cute. Um, so if you have scissors, you can just cut these out of this piece of paper. If you don't have scissors, then I kind of recommend that you um, tear them out. Now you can use a paintbrush, but you can just use a Q-tip, I think. It's been a while since I did it this way. You wanna get the paper wet around your um, drawing. Now, the wetter you get it, the easier the paper is going to tear only where you want it to tear. So can you tell that that's wet there? Okay. So paper is going to um, take the easy way and it's going to tear where it's wet and weak. You notice I'm putting my finger over the design, so just in case it decides to tear a different way, it doesn't tear my design and I have something like that, right? So I'm gonna do the rest of them. What do I do with my own? I was gonna say what I do with my Q-tip, but it's right in front of me. Now, if you have a paintbrush, you can definitely do this with a paintbrush. It's easier with a paintbrush than a Q-tip, but you can do it with a Q-tip. Maybe you want to be brave and not get the paper wet before you tear them out. You can do that too. If you want them cut out and you're too little to use scissors or you don't have child safe scissors um, that are for you to use, then you might want to have mom or dad cut them out for you. They can do that. And you'll notice I got them all wet and I'm leaving them like soak in there a bit because the longer you let the water sink into the paper, um, the easier it will be to tear, right? It doesn't have to be perfect, that's good. Okay. 
Don't use any paper materials or supplies that aren't um, okayed by mom and dad. And I know I'm repeating myself about that, but you know, our point is to do something fun and creative and not get in trouble with mom and dad, right? Now the only trouble with doing it with water instead of scissors is some of your marker, if you've used marker, might reactivate, but I'm okay with that. Now, if you are keeping an art journal or a diary, um, you could definitely use these shapes as embellishments in your, in your journal. It's a good use for them. If you're doing scrapbooking or some other kind of paper craft, you might be able to use these and, the, and or this idea. Making your own embellishments, especially right now when we can't go outside to go buy stuff, right? Or at least we shouldn't be going outside to go buy stuff because we should be all staying home. Okay. So now we have our stuff, whole pile of it. Right? Okay, so now we're gonna take some colored paper and I have colored card stock. You might have something else at home. You might have construction paper or something like that. Use what you have. It could be plain white paper. It could be paper from mom and dad's printer. Again, use what you have. I think I'm gonna grab this purple one. This is a small piece of paper. I think it's four by six. I'm gonna fold it in half. Okay. I'm gonna pick some of my shapes and I think I think I made these squares yesterday. There's one more of them in here somewhere. I know there is. Square, square, where are you? There it is, I see it, ha, okay. So I have this, I have a piece of newspaper. Uh, cut or tear a piece of your newspaper out. It doesn't matter really what it says. You're looking for just color and texture of that piece of paper and the writing on the paper. This one happens to be yellow and purple. It goes good with this piece of paper here. Cut it so that it fits on the front. I'm gonna use Elmer's. You can use a glue stick. To glue it on. Center it on the front of your paper. Okay, then put your decorations on, whichever ones, maybe you wanna put eyeballs, a whole bunch of eyeballs on here. Actually, that would be interesting if you put, now that I just said that, if you put a whole bunch of eyeballs on here. I did make a whole bunch of eyeballs. So you could do something like, you could do anything. I do think I'm going to put the squares. Actually, before I put the squares, I'm going to take some of my masking tape. I want to put some tape on there. I got to find the end of the tape. End, end, where are you, end? Hmm, is there no end? Oh, oh, there it is, got it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna take some of this tape. I wanna put some tape on here. I like the texture of the tape. It's not about, cause I need to like tape the thing down. I just like the texture of the tape. 
Okay, then I'm gonna put my squares. Let's do this one first. Oops. You might need to hold them down a little bit if you're using Elmer's until it dries. Okay, then I want you to grab another little scrap of paper I'm gonna cut this one, but you could, again, you could tear it or you could um, tear a word out of a magazine or out of the newspaper that you're using. And I'm gonna write a word or a message on this little piece of paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the piece of paper and I'm gonna look at it and see how big I want it to be. That looks good. And then I'm gonna keep it simple. So this is a way for you to practice your writing and your spelling, right? So I'm gonna write hello. So how do you spell hello? H-E-L-L-O, right? You could write it in cursive if you're practicing cursive. Do they even still do that in school? I don't know. Or you could just print it. So H E L L O. And we're going to use some more glue and put that on. Okay. Now, once that's dry, you can grab an envelope and write a little note to your friends, one of your friends on the inside and write a note to them. Say, you know, hello, I miss you. What are you doing? How are you, um, you know, getting on? Um, I'm, you know, enjoying making cards and playing with, you know, my Xbox, whatever it is, make, write a note to them and sign your name and ask them to write a note back to you and start a pen pal mail with them while you're home. You can send them little notes with, of course, mom and dad's permission because you're going to need to get a stamp from mom and dad. So that's a safe way to communicate in an old-fashioned way with your friends. Send them a note. The other thing that you could do with these is there's a lot of people that are sick right now. There's a lot of people that are sick in the hospital right now. So you could write them a little note about you, how you hope they get well soon, that you're thinking of them. And then you could have maybe mom and dad um, mail these to the local hospital. I don't advertise um, going over there to drop them off. I think that's a bad idea right now. But you could send the notes to a local hospital. You could even call um, the hospital and ask them where that you have some get well notes for their patients in the hospital and where can you send them to and get a mom and dad can mail the notes for you. Um, these are cute little notes. You could also just make a whole bunch of them. And when this whole thing is over, you have uh, little cards to give your friends for their birthday, for um, Christmas. You could do them for any holiday. Um, you could make one for Mo Mother's Day and Father's Day. Those are going to be coming up soon, yes? So make some fun little drawings. Make some fun little cards. Um, Mom and Dad, look at the list um, that's <clears throat> linked in the description and um, pick out some crafts to do at home, sit and do some coloring, um, do some drawing, do some practicing. It's a good way to kill the time and do something creative while you're home, yes? All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. I don't, you know, I don't even know if you can, but. Um, whatever you can do. This this video is not monetized. So like, share, subscribe if you can. And don't forget the most th important thing. Go out and have a great day. Do what you need to right now in this stressful time to do our part and um, help 
uh, how we can, which is stay home, stay clean, and stay healthy. And um, do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Thank you.